Right, hello. Basically, I am recording another video, and I have some um, footage that I took from round the Willow Festival, because I went over there over the weekend. And the point of this video is, um, it's going to be Willow Festival part number three, but I'm going to do some other bits, because that's what it is. Um, this year's Willow Festival, that has just finished, did not have any headline acts. Which, to me, I wasn't very happy about. But, like people said, it's not about the headline act or anything like that. But I think that um, what what it should be about is at least one headline act. They have had in the past, and I've mentioned that on previous blogs. And, you know, we go on Facebook and things like that. You know, we, we're often commenting on a lot of statuses and things and bits and pieces to do with um, things that have basically happened over the Willow Festival and things like that. And I think we're, uh, we're able to give our own opinions. We don't want to upset anybody. I, I'm not. I'm not saying, you know, that, you know, um, I'm not saying we're going to go to the Winter Festival and come back and say it was crap, rubbish, blah 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 blah. blah. But what we would do, we would always have constructive criticism. We would always have our own opinions and views. It might not be the greatest, but it's something that you've got to look at, you've got to think about. Think about what could be done to make the event, you know, great. I know I've always said, and I know people would say to me, you know, they say it's not about the headline app, but I will say that I'm not asking for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten main apps to play at the Willow Festival. What I'm asking for is every year you should be able to have one act one act now that would be somebody who's basically famous they could be famous today or they could have been famous 10 years ago 20 30 40 even 50 years ago i know 50 years ago seems a lot and people say 50 years ago how far are you going ah but it depends who it might well be from 50 years ago that would be if it was something, you know, and it could be that they have a specific artist who has been big in certain decades. Like, for instance, every year the Wonder Festival comes on, so if they're going to put the Wonder Festival on next year and the year after the year after, and it's going to go on for a couple more years, or for whatever reason, you know, and it's going to be one of those festivals that can carry on for so long into the future, you've got to think about what they can do every year to have one act. Like, we're not going to go back on the previous ones I think you were about before, but we're going to look, and look to the future, we're going to imagine that next year will be, you know, you have a main app. And we might say, right, the example might be 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and noughties. Five, five decades, so they might look at that and think we're going to put, I'm also only going to pick one from every decade, but they might think about that, but they might say we've got, in the next five years we've got a plan to have these particular artists if they're still around, and we would like to have them at the Willow Festival. Five different types of music maybe, or at least three. Some would would come back within the type of music, not necessarily in the main, but in the um the subgenre. So the, the the example would be basically you've got um for instance you pick a sixties band, there might be a band that are still going. So next year it might be something like a sixties band that are well into their um who's been going for something like 50, 55 years or whatever, you know, a, a band like the Hollies, they're still performing and they would like to, uh, they would like to be the main act of the Willow Festival, as an example. Or, somebody might come along and say there's actually a band going from the 70s, it could be a, it could be a rock band, and they could be based on something like, um, I don't know, Yellow or something like that might have a reformation of a band with, say, two original members in it, or one original member, or two members that were out at whatever time. Like, when they had T-Rex, they basically had one member who was out in T-Rex, but whatever, right? The other example might be, the 80s might provide, you know, someone like Kim Wilde. She might be coming into music again, and decide that she's going to play the Willow Festival. I'm not saying she will, but this is an example. The 90s might provide an artist, it could be an indie band or something like that, you know, that, you know, you might find a band who were big 
um, at one point, like the charlatans or something like that, who are, you know, or the naughty might provide a boy band or something like that, you know, you, know, you might get a boy band that comes back, like A1, as an example. The fact is, or it might be something to do with, say, soul music, you know, you might look at some soul singer who's still going strong, like Jackie Graham or whoever. The fact is, this is where I think, and many people have said it before, you know, it's not about we have a load of them, but this is where they could draw the crowd in. Because some people have to travel further afield to come to the Willow Festival. They might not be, they might not technically be from Peterborough, they might be from Stamford, they might be from Wiz Beach, they might be from even further, you know. And they know about the Willow Festival, and the Willow Festival does provide bands not only from the local area, but the fact is, the people coming from further afield, they might think, oh, what would attract me to go to the Willow Festival? Is it because there's all these unknown bands that they've never heard of? Or do they look at it and go, but I'm coming for one reason, they've got a well-known headline act. And I don't mean the cop out of, let's have a tribute act. Bjorn again, yeah, they made the chart, they're an, they're an average tribute band, but that would be a cop out for that to happen. Because they might turn, I mean we had Angelo Star one year and Lorraine Silver, and they might not be technically the most famous in the world, but they were a little bit famous. Angelo Star is Edwin Star's brother. But the thing, the thing I'd like to see is more and more happening for Peter Bright in terms of music, you know, bringing the bands. And even if it's a free festival or something and they can have a band on there that are famous, brilliant. The fact is, if you're going to, it, it's great to have that idea that the Willow Festival comes on and they pick one main act, one, head, one headline act, every year for the first, say, three or four years, you have different, you have different, at least the first three years you have something different. So that everybody has a sort of look in. So you're not having a rock band that's coming that year, that year, that year, that year, for four years and going, is that all they ever have? Rock bands. No, you're having, for the first three years, you're looking at it by thinking about the different types of music that you can have. So, for the first year, it's a pop artist like Tim Wilde. She's basically a pop singer. She makes pop music. That could be for one year. The second, the second time can be somebody who basically um, an artist who could have well have been big in the 90s and they might well have been in the way of making indie records like the Charlatans as I've said then the third year it could be something soulful, it could be something a little bit older um, you might be looking at something where the artists were pretty big in the, pretty big in the 70s pretty big in maybe the early 80s or something like that, you know they were making soul records so you would have a band who generally are Heatwave or whoever, even I've seen them before, like that. When you get to when you get to the fourth year, you are constantly thinking about something else that might have been done before, which might be to bring back a band, but a pop band, not a pop artist, not like Tim but a pop band. Then of course you have something else that might come up. They might say, "Oh, we've got a country singer." You might be very lucky enough to find that there is um, a well-known country singer, an Irish country singer. If you look at something like Dominic Kerwin, as an example. Or it could be something that's internationally country. You know, you might be fortunate enough, I'm not expecting Dolly Parton, but you might be fortunate enough to find somebody who, who maybe comes from America, who's got a little bit of a um, country... Um, thing, I'm um, just trying to think, you know, you might find something like um, a country artist from America who made records in, say, America in the country chart. Um, John Michael Montgomery or whoever might be just the headline that. Although a lot of people might say we don't know who he is, but you might find somebody who's had that, had that relationship of being a, a well-known country singer at some point of their time who would be quite easily put on the map it's quite easy to look at something like that you know it's someone like Billy Joe Spears is still alive it's easy to say he's Billy Joe Spears he's coming to England we'd like we'd like you to headline basically the World Festival that's how I see the World Festival I see it as, an, as, as a great example that we have um, radio there people FM and so on
I see I see it as a wonderful idea that they do have things like all these local bands, bands from further afield and different types of music. But what I do see is that it would bring in a lot more crowd if you knew you had a headline act. I'm not saying everybody will go and see them, but it would be for a lot of people who might go and see them because people might think, oh, they're travelling further afield, they know that there's going to be a well-known artist on there who they think, oh, do you remember seeing them back in the day? You know, going back and looking back at that act who could pull in that particular crowd when they see it. And they will see that as something like that, you know. You know, something like Go West, as an example. Just, I'm still perform, I'm still performing. So it's very easy for them to say, we'd like to play the World Festival. And that would be the example of somebody saying, oh, Go West, I can do the World Festival. And it would be like, oh, what an, what an idea to go and see them. And their fans, but I'm, I'm just saying these examples of, the types of music they can have. And I do think that's what they should do. They should basically make sure that every year they have at least one major headline act. And apart from that, the rest can be made up of whoever. And other bands might have the odd, as I've said before, people who was in it. I mean, this year we didn't really have anybody famous, but Gizbert was the closest you're ever going to get. But there you go. I do think that's what they should do. But um, all I'm saying is that I enjoyed the World Festival this year even though there were no major headline acts, but it went, it went well. There were some bands there that I knew and I loved them and I got to see a few new bands that I've never heard of before and connected to them, so um, I think it's all been great and I think maybe um, I might um, talk a bit more about the World Festival maybe in the future, particularly for next year's event and, and so on, but really just, just to say that it's been an enjoyment this year I, I couldn't say it's been bad, it's been good. I just think they could, you know, go one better for next year. Somebody headlining, and of course, um, hopefully get connected to a few new, few new bands that I've seen this year, including the, Dar the Darlingtons and Close Circuit. I see them two bands. I see them about the City Vibes as well, they're brilliant. But the Darlingtons, a wonderful indie band, go and check them out if you haven't. Ta Cameron Sanderson as well. I, um, I managed to see them, the more I see which is, but they were brilliant. Um, Cameron Sanderson, yes, great, and Close Circuit was brilliant. They did a cover of Beat It, which was absolutely brilliant. I love that. I got connected to them on Facebook, and as I said, you know, they're, they're some great bands. And the Darlingtons, if you're wondering, they're, they're an indie band, but they're a great band who can go crazy. So, there you go, and I'll leave it at that. So, um, anybody else who went to the World Festival? What was your experience? Did you like it? So, maybe you want to let me know. Um, comment and um, keep tuning because I've got some more blogs to put very soon. Bye!